Look at this place, absolutely mega. So this is the joy about coming somewhere new, isn't it? Just like, get to see. This is the buzz, man, proper buzz. All I knew about this place was the postcode, the code to the gate, turned up. Wow, breathtaking. Dolly Mill's about four acres in size, I'd say, and it absolutely screams carp fishing. It's full of lily pads and overhanging weeping willows. A little island that splits the lake into two, and literally the best thing about the place is I don't know anything about the stock, so anything I catch is going to be a surprise. I was just having a, my first like round. It's pretty um, uneventful until I've just spotted a fish on the far bank over there. It's definitely something a little bit strange as well. It's, at first I thought, oh, there's one sat on its, uh, with its back out, but it seems to be swimming with its back out now, and its tail as it swims. Looks a good fish though, real good fish. Tell me now, if I saw that anywhere else, I'd have said that was a 40 pounder, at least. Back on it. <laughs> I've had a look at the rules. This far margin is actually out of bounds. So it's obviously going to be a bit of a, a, bit of a magnet for them. Hopefully, you can find some fish along this margin tucked up in the lily beds and that. There's definitely more fish down this end of the pond, that's for sure. Only been, what, five minutes out of here? Seeing bits going on in these paths, real rattling. Vortex here, one jumped out there. This is the place to be. So just uh, come round to have a look at this margin where they're all sort of congregated. I was hoping for a little bit of a better angle so I could sort of fish between the pads or up to the pads in coming in from this angle. But where I am, it's quite, I'd be fishing past, if I wanted to stagger them, I'd have lines going past where I'm fishing. But yeah, the angle's not great. Just looking, I don't even know how deep it is or anything. Just might be able to sort of maybe weigh down a little bit and get that little bit of angle. Hmm, we'll see. This definitely seems to be the area though. That's the main thing, so. I suppose I could tuck one in here short and put one long and I wouldn't be fishing through myself. We'll see. What I've done is I've decided to come a little bit further up this bank from in that corner. Really feel like that corner is a one rod job and I won't be able to fish past any of them pads because if they kite round, I'm gonna end up losing fish or putting them in danger anyway. So I've come a bit further up the bank got a great angle down towards them pads so the fish if they do head for the pads I'm behind them so I can bring them towards me fish locked up I've noticed that there's a boat check with the owner we're allowed to use the boat you know we've got the whole place to ourselves you know this is a complex where you can book it out all for yourself uh, so that's exactly what I'm going to do fish three rods all, all around them pads I'll get the boat out have a thump around no doubt see if I can find some hardened areas or whatever I don't know anything about the makeup of the lake I don't know if it's weedy silty gravelly or anything so I've got loads to do so I'm going to get the kit out and get to it Done loads of fishing from the boat over the years and if this was a lake that I knew and I knew what I was going to be faced with out there I'd be getting my rigs prepped up on my rods and taking a rod out with me on that first run out. But like I said before I don't know what the lake bed's made up of so I'm going to grab my H blocks, jump in the boat, go and have a thump around and hopefully find some nice spots to fish for the night. Found a uh, nice little hard spot here, not far away from where them fish were earlier. It's quite away from the snags as well, especially where the roots will be. You've got to imagine with pads, the roots will go all the way sort of into the centre. I just used two two blocks, one to find where the rig's going to go, which is this one, and then the other one's just off the side of the spot. So I'm happy that a foot to the left, as I look at it now. 
of that block is where that rig's going to go. So that's one done. Definitely firmer. It's all soft, soft, soft. It's about six foot. Soft, soft, soft. But that is thump, thump, real hard. Possibly even a few inches, a little bit deeper. But yeah, definitely some firm ground all here. All this area here, definitely firm. Did notice as well, when I was thumping in the other bits, when it was real soft, loads of bubbles were coming up. Whereas when I'm thumping this now, there's no bubbles. That's definitely a fed area. Let's go and find another one. So again, definitely a little bit firmer here. There, right there. So I'll leave that bot there, because that's where the rig wants to go. Drop him. Foot or so to the side, like that, and slightly behind. And I know that rig wants to be there. I can put the bait out, drop the rig, lift that block up. I'll show you that when I'm doing the rods. Oh, yeah, that's solid there. Nice. That'll do. Two rods down here. Put one out in the pond, I think. Initial thoughts buzzing, really. You know, there's nothing better than finding a nice hard zone among soft. You know, from doing leading, it's exactly the same. As soon as you find get that firm drop, it's exactly the same out in the boat. Obviously, this water's um, real murky, so I can't see the bottom, so it's all done on touch. And yeah, found a couple of hard zones. Yeah, I was going to have three down there, but I just think three long lines going across all that way. You say all that way, it's not even far. You could cast it, really, but I think while we've got the use of the boat, go out as gentle as you can, have a nice little thump around. It's probably less disturbance than thumping leads in there. Um, again, it could have been really weedy and next minute you've put 50 leads through the swim. Um, so yeah, found it real easy, out in the boat, a couple of hard zones. Probably look at finding some out in the open water maybe or across that far margin, but apart from that, absolutely buzzing. Found three clear spots, nice and hard. So that hook is good to be way on the bottom. So obviously, it's three noodles. On them. This one's on the uh, krill dumbbell after, so I'm just going to put krill active around this one. And then over the other one I'm going to have another nut and fish it around just particle. Sort of fish the two against each other, because again, it's just figuring out the lake, innit? See which one works, you know, might, they might like a bit of both, but... Gonna overdo it with bait, just can always put more in. Can't get it out. Right, next. Alright, with this one, put the bait out first. Then I can literally just get the uh Get the rig out and then lift the block and get back. That'll do. Hopefully, just enough to entice a bite. I have to get myself in position now. I like to have it drop the rig out the right hand side of the boat, facing back towards the swim. I'm ready to go.
rods are out. Put them first two down at the bottom near the pads there. Found some real nice hard areas. They've gone out sweet. Just a little bit of bait around each of them. Enough for a bite, hopefully. Uh, and then got that third one out on a little bit of a raised area. Put quite a bit of bait around that one as well. Just to try and do mix things up a bit. You know, this is a new place. I've never fished here before. So I've got a bit of park on one, bit of boilery on the other. Put a lot of bait around the other one. You know, you've got to see what works. Um, apart from that, I'm really happy with how everything's gone. Hopefully these fish turn back up into that zone in the morning. Uh, looked at the weather, it's given us the same conditions for tomorrow morning, nice early sunrise, beaming on that margin. Hopefully that's what attracts them down there. And that's it really. I've had a couple of suspicious liners on one of them rods there. Could potentially be crayfish. I don't know if there's crays in here. Hopefully it was just small fish or something hitting the line, but if there is crays in here, we're going to know about it tomorrow because there'll be no updates on but you know again that's the beauty of not knowing where you're fishing and it's a trial and error situation but for now we've got lake exclusive so it's just us boys on here we're going to throw a barbie on a couple of beers hopefully wake up to some fish So I got one, <laughs> happy days, buzzing. Felt a little bit under pressure, if I'm honest, yesterday, just because it seemed a bit lifeless, but it was pretty apparent as soon as it went down last night, it came to life. Started hearing them out in my zone, probably had five or six by midnight, stayed up quite late. I always think that's a good idea anyway, you know, especially when you're trying to learn a new wake and the behaviors. But I heard a lot more fish this side, probably at least double that amount. And the good thing about this place, with it being such a small, sort of crowded with trees and that, everything echoes, you know, all the little birds going off and that, coots. So yeah, definitely eared fish this side. Got a nice one, went off about five cots this morning, and it was the right hand rod that was on that, uh, that sort of plateau area over there. So uh, yeah, I'm going to grab him out, sort that out. I reckon it's probably mid to upper double. I haven't weighed it yet, it's just resting in the net. And yeah, got a plan for the day thinking about a definite move to this side, sort the night area out and then maybe go for a stalk, but we'll come to that in a bit. Let's get this fish out and get it dealt with. Here he is. My first dolly milk carp. <laughs> My first carp from the northeast as well made up with this. I think gone to plan really as well. Just goes to show about how I spread them rods out. Uh, what'll save you really, putting that one on the plateau. Absolutely buzzing. Look at him. Absolutely made up with this. First one, hopefully not the last. Look at them big scales down there. Buzzing. There's always an element of sort of pressure and uncertainty when you go into a new way you know you don't know what's going to work what's not going to work you know you've got to figure it out and figure it out quick you know especially when you've got like a restricted time that you've got that you've got to make it work and um, having that fish last night definitely sort of eases that air quality and pressure you know it, it's it it just it's something to build off now you know i can go from there you know i've stayed up white last night and worked out what i think the fish are sort of doing it seems like they're getting towards the ends of the ponds in the day in the sun in the shower sort of out of bounds areas or, or, or restricted access areas anyway and then coming into that middle zone uh, for a feed in the night so th that's the plan for tonight as well you know I've, I've within a 20 it's not even been 24 hours and i feel like i've worked some sort of pattern as to what the fish are doing so that is what i've got to tap into now and make sure that i get myself in the right zone for tonight Bacon. 
think, well done, it ain't going on. Just uh, kicking back, just waiting for these fish to hopefully turn up. I'm gonna give it to at least like about 11 o'clock. That's when I found them there yesterday. Hopefully, chance of a late morning back. Still sat on these rods. Day's getting a little bit late now. It's probably coming on for 12 o'clock. However, the weather condition, the weather channel got it totally wrong. You know, it's a, it was give to, to come in the same as what it was yesterday, which is obviously why we're sat here. Um, however, about 20 minutes ago, I did have a real savage liner on the, that right hander of the two down, down towards the pad. So hopefully uh, that might be a little case of the fish turning up. Uh, so I'm going to sit out a little bit longer, tie probably use this time to tie up a couple of rigs. Pretty sure I'm probably going to be using noodles that side, hopefully find some hard areas. I'm going to tie up a few noodles and uh, yeah, use this time just to get prepped for tonight really. I always pay massive attention to the weather conditions and the carp's behaviour around them. When I find the fish in a certain area, I'll always log mentally and physically sometimes what the weather conditions are doing because it's always good to be able to relate back, notice changes in the weather and a change in the carp's behaviour around that weather. So like for, for instance, we found that when that sun really beat down on them pads down at bottom end yesterday, them fish were all grouped up there, whereas today it's totally different conditions, so I can, the, the fish just aren't there, and it, I've recognised it. So it might be if, the, if it was going to be a nice early sunrise again and it was going to be beating down on them pads, it could be an area where I'd focus my attention, and vice versa to that, if it was going to be sort of overcast like it has been this morning, they've clearly not turned up there, so I'd be looking for other areas where the fish are congregating. I'm making this move today based on what the fish were doing last night. However, again, these weather conditions have changed, so they could end up somewhere else uh, as opposed to where they were last night. So I've got to be up again, and if I was staying on for another couple of nights, or like I say, if this was somewhere where I was going to be focusing my attention, I'd want to know what them fish are getting up to with this change of conditions. Are they going to get on this new wind that's coming? Are they going to get on the back of it? You know, are they going to go to different areas? So I'd always be up recognising that change of weather and change of the fish's behaviour. What I am uh, decided to do is um, I'm going to use the boat again. Obviously, with catching last night and using the boat, it just shows that the fish weren't sort of scared of the boat and they all went down the veranda or anything like that. If that had happened and they hadn't caught, I might have ventured away from it. But yeah, I'm going to use the boat again. I know this time, though, whereas yesterday I didn't know the makeup of the bottom, what I was going to be feeling for or anything. I didn't know if there was going to be hard spots or if it's all weed and silt, whereas now I know there's hard spots that I'm looking for. So I'm going to look for a couple of hour spots out here and look at using all noodles. So I can prep all that up now. I'm gonna use the noodles on all three rods, get them prepped up, uh, and I'm not putting any pressure into the swim then until I'm ready to go, uh, which, which is good. It's better to do it all in one setting rather than if I went and got the boat now, went out, found some spots, then I'm prepping my rods, then I've got to go out again. It's sort of strategic pressure through the swim, which isn't ideal. Do it all in one hit. So that's what I'm going to do, and I chose to move quite early really, you know, it's near, near on one o'clock. Like I said, the weather conditions have changed massively, so I think get the rods set nice and early, because yesterday them fish really did start to show and come alive around sort of six, seven o'clock. When I just got my rods sorted, you started hearing them, started seeing signs, the coots going off here, there. So uh, yeah, I'm going to get sorted nice and early. The only information I had from last night, location-wise, was that it were this side, and I've obviously moved on that. And the only information I've sort of gathered tactical wise is that the up bait was a nut and it was the only rod that there was uh, quite a bit of bait around. So therefore on these rods I'm going all nuts and I'm going to give them a little bit of bait. I don't mean loads overdoing it, just, sim just, just similar to there, what I did last night. Make sure you whack these three nuts on, grab that bolt and off we go. So what I've done here is as soon as I've got out to a sort of position where I quite fancy the look of, 
I put an H box straight out because it's really easy to lose yourself when you're out in the boat. The reason I've sort of picked this area is because all this sort of back bank is out of bounds, obviously. This is out of bounds to the right here. And this is a safe enough distance just past them pads where I feel I can get them back before they can sort of get around there. So it's a bit of a sort of a no man's land, if you know what I mean. So I'll just put one out here. This looks nice. And there's a nice sort of firm area here. It goes soft and firm. It's just the same as when you're heading up with a rod. I've got my fingers direct to the to the to the cord here. Uh, so I can feel every little bit of Fud, thump, everything's going through that cord. Just the same as the braid on a rod. You just get a little harder donk, softer donks. There's definitely a little area here. A few feet to the right. Well, the left as you guys look at it. About here, it feels really firm. Yeah, it's like dink, 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 as opposed to donk, 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 if that makes any sense. <laughs> Looks like this is the spot for the third. Happy days. My chosen bait for this session is pretty much my go-to autumn mix. You know, I've used it everywhere. I've got so much confidence in it. And what it consists of is a, a boiler that I'm confident in, which is a krill active, caught loads of fish on it, especially in the autumn. You know, it's, it's full of all that nutrition that they know they need to pack on for that winter that's ahead. You know, they feel them temperatures dropping in the water and they know exactly what's coming and it's winter. Mixed with that, I just use whole and crushed tigers. Main reasons for that are the fish love that crunch effect, slamming them back on the teeth, but also that white fleck of the tiger is a great visual aid on the bottom. The only other particle I use is hemp. You know, it's constantly leaking off them oils, just activating that spot constantly. And then just right at the very end, I'll just give it all a good lash in the countless liquid. I like to put the bait on the rig and beyond. Sort of speaks for itself why. But yeah, don't want any bait falling on that line lay. If the fish pick that line up, they'll be off. I put quite a bit out, sort of similar amount to what I caught on last night. Just before I get this last rod out, I thought I'd whip you through what it is that I'm using end tackle wise. It's got balanced knot uh, and a noodle, ever faithful noodle. You know, got no reason to question this rig, caught loads of fish on it. Uh, size 4 curve point there, and that's a cam stiff material, anti tangle sleeve, and lead clip system. I am using 5 ounce flat pairs because I'm dropping from the boat. Uh, they're not great for casting these. If I was casting, I'd be using a bit more cast friendly setup. Uh, and then, yeah, up from that, four carbon leader, nice, big, thick, heavy one to keep it all pinned down and invisible. Got three XL tungsten droppers slid up there. And that's it, really. Does what it says on the tin, and hopefully, gonna catch me a fish tonight. And them three are absolutely rocking. Oh, do you walk at this place? The screen's proper like homey feel, isn't it? <laughs> Pictures. Look at these. <laughs> oh, as in, look at that.
size one. I wonder if that's that big confidence to me. So last night, the owner Rich came down, we were talking, had a good old chat, and yeah, I already knew that this was Rod Hutchinson's weight, but he filled in many gaps, told me loads of stuff about the place, and you know, just sort of tales and things that he used to get up to here, how he used to use it, his own little sort of sanctuary. And it's brilliant to hear, you know, such a legend like that, you know, and to be in the presence of places that he's been in the past, you know, just, you sort of picture him being in his little hut and that, you know, just sitting there chilling, with a cold one, you know, chatting with the boys and that. It's just nice, you know, you can feel that aura about the place. And when he was telling the stories last night, it was great to hear, showing us a few of the old pictures and that. Such a mega, mega place. And I'm just glad that I got, got to be here really and, and sort of witness it all, take it all in and, and have a go for some of these mega fish as well. A place that the legend himself fished back in the day. evening time now and it was around about this time last night that they really started to put on a bit of a performance. I'm hoping, sort of just stood up on this high bank looking both ways, I'm hoping that they start to sort of give themselves away again now. I haven't seen anything as of yet but I'm pretty sure they're going to be in the same mood. If not, it's probably going to be down to this weather change. That's my excuse anyway. But nah, I'm sure uh, I've made the right move. I'm really confident with how them rods have gone out. They're all absolutely spot on. It's beauty of the boat fishing, really. I've been able to get everything absolutely bang on. Confidence is booming. The fish were definitely that side. I can't help but think it's definitely a bite on the cards. Quiet night. Really, honestly thought it was gonna happen. Everything went out, couldn't have gone any more. Perfect. Did there a few shows. Feeling a bit despondent. Looks like it's drifting away. Still early, and you never know. Gotta stay positive. Always gotta stay positive. But yeah, it just looks lifeless. I've never known, well really, a place to just, just lose life during the day. Like your first light, you, you wake up like, Kid at Christmas, like thinking, oh, fizzers and shows and nothing. And it definitely seems like it's uh, a nighttime venue at the minute, anyway. Um, but yeah, I'll stick it out for a bit. And uh, the only saving grace is it's a bit like the first morning when we got here, well, first afternoon, clearish sky, so hopefully, might be able to find a little opportunity in the pads or something like that, find some fish, maybe try and force a bite. But even regardless of that, it's been mega here. Really. Like, it's been a privilege to be able to even wet a line in here so, and catch one. Yeah, just really felt like something was going to happen. It's dead. Hmm. Been having a walk because it's been so quiet. I'm walking over to the, towards this far bank here and there's little bits and bobs just going on. Just trying to, trying to really hop down where they are. There's, what gave it away is they had one show around the back of there from my swim. And I'm just looking, there's definitely something going on over there. I'll spend a minute or two just having a walk, trying to nail something down and I think I might have to get a rig in there. Definitely. Time is definitely of the essence. It's not anymore. <laughs> Try putting the bait stop in the hole, mate. Oh, there's nothing worse than rushing, is he? Gather your thoughts now. Calm self. But yeah, need to uh, try and act on this as quick as possible, but at the same time, get it right as well. 
So it's quite easy to get get it wrong when you're rushing. So composure is definitely key, which I'm definitely not doing at the minute. <laughs> Might only get one chance of this, so I'm going to use the boat, which is just wore it in as quiet as I can. Might just throw a little handful of pellet just to semi spook them, and then yang over it in, just brisk away. Hopefully, get it right. Come on. That was absolutely perfect. I definitely couldn't have gone any better. I'm literally just sat down with that other rod just there. One of these has come on. Come on. Gone off of me. <laughs> oh god. Tell I've got a bit of lockdown weight on me. Wow. Only one buddy ten yards. <laughs> come on now. Literally just as that sun's starting to touch that margin. Oh, my legs are shaking and everything. That's it. Come on. Come on, get in. He's in. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Big breath. <laughs> yes. Oh, I'm buzzing. Look at him. Made me run, didn't you, mate? <laughs> oh, I'm buzzing with this, honestly. Made the day. To that move as well just goes to show though i was feeling the pressure a little bit this morning say pressure you know just like i said getting a bit despondent just thought like the chance had gone and nothing really happened after that move but paid off in the end and regardless of size i am buzzing absolutely buzzing i've had a great time at uh, dolly mill mega mega place beautiful in every way and the fish are as well it's definitely somewhere i'll be coming back to and this is one place and one fish I will never forget. Go on, mate. 20 years time, we're making some dreams come true. Buzzing.